I'm going to take you through the standing locking sequence. If you can learn the standing locking sequence, it's going to help you continue when you get into closer, uh, close quarter combat trapping and when you want to set up your uh, handcuffs. And that would be for active resistance. So I, I do a little drill so you can understand the anatomy of the hand. So you see when we're on the ground, I have this position, right? It's this wrist lock. And there's a lot of martial art moves that show you this kind of control. So what we like to do is do this drill where I show you the proper wrist manipulation to get to this, to this, this, to this, okay? Now the difference from a martial arts point of view of locking and defensive tactics is that I'm using verbal command. You'd be surprised how our bodies react to verbal commands. So in this sequence, I'm teaching my body that when I get resistance, when, when, when I get resistance to a wrist lock, or I just get his fingers, you see how I reacted? I just grabbed him by the fingers and his teeth chattered. From here, I learned to keep contact, keep everything close, stay away from, from any hands that can hit me, threat scan around so that I have control, not support the wrist, and then quickly move behind and circular so if you'd like to come in, I come in circular and behind and tightly fit this in. The days of doing a transport lock are over. If you are being taught some, by someone that is doing a transport lock, this is about 1970s. Okay, we, we have now done a goose head, right? So from here, this allows me a quick switch. You're going to have to come all the way around again as I tuck in my head and I drive it up behind the back and as I drive it behind the back I cut in behind the elbow. Also this where the hand goes behind the muscles is 1970s because he can bicep curl me just as much as I could try to turn him over. So I need to attack ligament tendon areas and cut him off from his muscles so you saw I was at the cleft of the elbow. And then I drive inside of his shoulder, that center point, which drives him up. If he drives himself out, I lock over the tendon tricep and by accident he hit my knee. Liability. I command him as I lock it, down, 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 down. And again, I'm in the same position we started, where I have full control with my legs. I keep contact. I let him get up on his own. And we could go through the cycle over and over. Over and over and over. Thank you.